All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another session of our Bible study. Uh, this week, we're going to focus on the story of Joseph. Um, now, the story of Joseph is one that is just a very familiar story, um, and it's one that I'm sure you all have heard much about. But tonight, we're going to focus on a little bit different aspect about the story of Joseph. We all we all know the story of Joseph and and um, how popular this this biblical story is. There's actually even um, a Broadway show that was created about the story of Joseph called Joseph in the Technicolor Dreamcoat. And we learned many you know, important uh, biblical principles about the story of Joseph. We learned about integrity, about hard work. We, we learned how he excelled in every aspect of his life and you know how he went from being a slave and a prisoner to to actually being the second most you know powerful person in the kingdom you know you always hear pastors say hey he went from the prison to the to the palace so we know quite a bit about joseph but today i want to focus on a little bit different aspect we want to talk about uh joseph's family and how his dysfunctional family uh, impacted his life and how God used that dysfunction to achieve his purpose through Joseph's life. Now, throughout the Bible, there are oftentimes when God teaches us implied lessons. Now, an implied lesson is something that we get from the story that's not the main focus of the story. And I believe that this story of Joseph is one of those, and it's found in the book of Genesis. Now, I sent you guys a link uh, to, to read a few verses from Genesis about the story of Joseph, but I will encourage you in your own uh, private study time uh, to read Genesis chapter 37 through chapter 50, and that encompasses the entire life story of Joseph. But we're going to talk about Joseph's family and how um, his dysfunctional, kind of interesting makeup of his family impacted his life, because I believe we all have various forms of dysfunction and, and things in our families, and I think we can take some encouragement from the story of Joseph. Now, sometimes our, family has, our families have brokenness and dysfunction that lasts for generations, and families in the Bible are no, no exception. Now, we learn in Genesis chapter 37 that Joseph was the product of a blended family. Now, I use this description blended to put it nicely. The, the truth of the matter is Joseph's father, Jacob, had two wives who were sisters. Now, one that he loved and one that he didn't love. He also had children by his each of his wives' servant girls. So as a result, Jacob had children by four different women. There were 12 boys and some daughters that, that we aren't even counting in the, in the story here. Now, Joseph was one of the two sons born to Jacob's wife, Rachel. And Rachel was the wife that he loved. And because of this, Joseph received some special treatment and he was Jacob's favorite. And to the point where Jacob actually had this special coat made for, for Joseph. So wherever Joseph went, he had this coat on that basically told his brothers that he was the favorite. He was the one that was picked by his father. Now, the unconventional makeup of Joseph's family greatly impacted the dynamics of the family. Now, it's commonplace in our culture for families to have many different blended variations as well. You know, sometimes we have families where the children have different fathers or different mothers. Sometimes we have families where the parents have remarried and now they are their stepchildren that are in, in the mix. And any of these various blended scenarios can lead to various types of dysfunction and, and, and conflict in families. And this was the case with the story of Joseph. Now, we learn in the story that Joseph had a big dream. You know, Joseph had some dreams that God had laid on his heart, and he began to talk about those dreams with his family. He told his brothers, and he told his father and his mother. And this is uh, what we find in Genesis chapter 37. It's that one night Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. 
suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and the way he talked about them. You know, sometimes the people closest to you, your relatives, your friends, are not able to see the things in you that God has revealed to you. Jesus even told us about this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. He says, your enemies will be right in your own household. Jesus himself was misunderstood by his family. In Matthew 13, 57, it says, and they were deeply offended and refused to believe him. This is, was Jesus' family and his friends and the people that lived in his community. They didn't believe what Jesus had to say, and because of it, he wasn't able to do miracles in his hometown. Jesus went on to say, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own family. Now, being misunderstood by family isn't always intentional. Sometimes your family members mean well. They just don't see the same thing that God is showing us. Now, in Joseph's case, his brothers did not mean him well. They wanted to hurt him so much that they they plotted to kill him. We learned in the 37th chapter of Genesis that Joseph's brothers came up with a plan to kill him. But they had a little bit of a change of heart. They were just going to murder him. Then they said, look, you know, we instead of killing him, we'll just throw him here in this empty cistern. Now, a cistern is is a is a sewage hole. So they threw him in the cistern and they said, we'll just wait for him to die. That way we won't have to kill him with our own hands. But then one of the other brothers said, you know what? Let's not kill him. Let's let's just get rid of him. And they sold him into slavery to some some passing by uh, traders that were on their way to Egypt. So they they pulled Joseph up out of the hole packed him up and sent him to Egypt in slavery. And then they went home and told Jacob, Joseph's father, that he had been murdered or that he had been killed by a wild animal. So this whole series of lies and deception and everything, that this really launched a, a tremendous uh, series of painful events for Joseph. Now, this is an extreme example of intentional family hurt. You know, an example when family does something really to try to hurt you. But even small family offenses can lead to ongoing pain and anguish. The type of things that we see in families could be hurtful words, people saying things to their children or to their parents that they can't take back, broken promises, you know, sinful mistakes, unresolved arguments, unforgiveness and lack of remorse. All of these things can occur in families and lead to seasons of pain. So this was the scenario we find Joseph in. He's now shipped off to Egypt. He's going to be a slave. And the, the story continues, and we find Joseph is now um, living in the house as a slave of a, of a man named Potiphar. Now, Potiphar was the captain of the king's guard. And he brought Joseph into his house to, to tend his house and to take care of his house. And this, this led to another series of events. And, and we find that Joseph even excelled in slavery. Uh, uh, Potiphar put him in charge of everything in his house. And Joseph endured through this. Now, this story, this extreme story of family, you know, family dysfunction can, can lead to hurt and pain. And, but it's a story that should encourage us because God was still with Joseph, even through his tri trials and tribulations, even though his family had forsaken him, God had his hand on him, helping him to, to succeed in the worst possible scenarios. Now, the story of Joseph teaches us that God is with us, even when our family Forsake us, forsakes us. God can help us to succeed at the worst possible situations. But the, the key is we have to remain obedient to him. Now, there are several lessons that we can learn uh, how Joseph overcame all these trials and tribulations. And I think these would be the things that we can take from this and, and understand how, to, how, how we can um, still be blessed even in bad situations. 
Joseph made cho choices during his trials that made all of the difference in how his life turned out. Now, from these choices, we can learn some valuable lessons. And there are three particular uh, lessons that I want to point out tonight. The first lesson is Joseph stayed faithful to God, even when all was lost, even when everyone was abusing him, even when his family abandoned him and, and left him to die. He still made he still stayed faithful to God. And Genesis chapter 39, we learned that after Joseph arrived in, in Egypt and he was a slave in Potiphar's house, that he actually began to be uh, uh, pursued by Potiphar's wife. In Genesis 39, chapter uh, uh, verse 5 and 9, it says, From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar for Joseph's sake. All his household affairs ran smoothly and his crops and livestock prospered. So Potiphar gave jo Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. Joseph basically had the had the the run of the house. He could go and come and he he ran the house like the house belonged to him. But a, after some time, the word says that Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. He, he said, come and sleep with me, she demanded. But Joseph refused. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. So let's think about this for a second. Here it is. You're a slave in this man's house. You've been stolen away from your family and, and you're running this man's house. You, he's basically doing everything for this man. And the wife is like, hey, I want you. Joseph could have yielded to temptation. After all, he was a slave in this man's house. It, it would have been poetic justice to sleep with his wife. But Joseph didn't take that approach. Instead, he remained completely honorable, even under great temptation and pressure. He stayed faithful to God. Now, even though he stayed faithful to God, it didn't stop Potiphar's wife for, for trying to to push the matter on. She she continued her advances to the, the pressure got so much that Joseph had to run out of the house. And in the process of running out of the house, she snatched his shirt off standing there with the evidence. Then she decided to yell rape and say that this Hebrew boy that you brought into this house tried to assault me. So what happened next? Joseph's now not only a slave, he's finding himself in prison. In prison because he stayed faithful to God and would be a, and, and decided to be an honorable man, even when he was in a bad situation. The second lesson we learn from the story of Joseph is, is that he uh, sought to help others, even when the situation was bad for him. He always sought to help others. Now, the, the story goes on to tell us that while he was in, in prison, he was such an excellent person that he got promoted in prison. They, they put him in charge of all the other prisoners. Now, I've never heard of anybody getting promoted in, in prison, but Joseph did. Now, and he found himself in charge of two other prisoners who were from the king's court, uh, two men. There was the cupbearer and the baker. Now, in Genesis 40, Chapter, uh, verses one and five, it tells us sometime later, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer and chief baker offended their royal master. Pharaoh became angry with these two officials and he put them in prison where Joseph was in the palace of the captain, captain of the guard. They remained in prison for quite some time and the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph who looked after them. While they were there, uh, Joseph noticed that they were looking sad. So the story goes on to tell us that each one of them had had a disturbing dream uh, that night. And when Joseph noticed that they looked distraught, he asked them about the dream. So the story goes on to tell us that Joseph interpreted each one of their dreams and what he interpreted came true. The, the baker was was taken out of jail and executed, but the cupbearer was taken out of jail and given his job back working for Pharaoh. Now, before the, the cupbearer was released, Joseph told the cupbearer, he said, hey, man, when you get out of here, 
and you have Pharaoh's ear, tell him about me. Tell him that I'm here in jail and I'm here unjustly and I didn't do anything to be here. So I looked out for you. Please look after me. Well, unfortunately, the cupbearer forgot all about Joseph in prison. It, it was actually two years passed by. and He never gave Joseph another thought. But show you how God can show up and and turn a bad situation into a good situation. Two years later, Pharaoh himself had a disturbing dream and the cupbearer heard about this scenario and nobody could help Pharaoh interpret this dream. And the cupbearer said, hey, I remember this guy that's in jail and he interpreted both my dream and the baker's dream exactly the way that they would happen. Long story short. Pharaoh sent for Joseph. Joseph interpreted the dream, and, and, and this interpretation of the dream led to Joseph's trials finally coming to an end. What, what Joseph predicted is that there was some seasons of great prosperity coming to Egypt, followed by a great famine. And Joseph informed the, uh, the king, King Pharaoh, that he should put a man in charge who could orchestrate the plan to save the people. And guess who Pharaoh put in charge? He put Joseph in charge of, of managing the whole entire kingdom. So here it is. We have Joseph, who was a, a slave, who was a prisoner. He's now the most second powerful person in the kingdom. Joseph was greatly rewarded for his integrity, his patience, and his faith in God. Ultimately, Joseph would be, would be put in a position to be a blessing to his own family, those same brothers that sought to hurt him, Joseph was now put in a position to save them and actually to, to, to uh, prevent them from being uh, lost in that famine. Which leads me to the third point here, and that is Joseph forgave his family. He forgave his brothers and he had compassion on them. He didn't hold on to bitterness. He could have used his power that he had to annihilate his family and to, to rub his nose in the fact that they had hurt him and he was now in a position of power, but he didn't do any of these things. The story continues in Genesis chapter 42, verse one. It says, when Joseph heard that grain, when, when Jacob, that was Joseph's father, when Jacob heard that there was grain available in Egypt, he said to his sons, why are you standing around looking at one another? I have heard there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy enough grain to keep us alive. Otherwise, we'll die. So Joseph's 10 brothers went to Egypt to buy grain. But Jacob wouldn't let him take Joseph's younger brother, Benjamin. Now, eventually that famine that Joseph had predicted became, began to impact his own family. And God orchestrated it so Joseph's brothers would need to come to him for help or either face death from starvation. This is why we have to let God fight our battles for us. God will eventually deal with the people in your family who have hurt you. Joseph didn't have to take revenge on his brothers, nor did he seek it. God humbled them and showed them their sin. This is the principle we need to remember when dealing with dysfunction in our family. We, we are to continue to love our families and have a heart of forgiveness. Don't hold on to grudges and try to take revenge. Because of this, God turned evil to good and Joseph's life. Joseph not only saved his family's lives, but he moved them all to Egypt to start a brand new, more prosperous life with him. Now, later on, after Joseph's father, Jacob, died, his brothers became worried and, and they, they scheduled a meeting with him. And they were worried that once their daddy was dead, that Joseph would take revenge on them and that he would basically pay them back for what they had done. But this is how Joseph handled, handled that situation. In Genesis chapter 50, it says, Joseph replied, don't be afraid to me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to hurt me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. God had a good plan for Joseph, and he blessed him. And God also has a good plan for you and I. 
even if we are a product of a dysfunctional or a broken family, Joseph was able to clearly see the hand of the Lord guiding him through his life. He didn't let the evil that his brothers did turn him to, to having a hard heart. He kept loving them as God had intended. God blessed Joseph with two sons while he was in Egypt. The names he gave his sons while they were while he was in Egypt in Egypt gives us some insight into Joseph's faith. We'll find this in Genesis chapter one. I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 41, verse 51. It says, Joseph named his older son Manasseh, for he said, God has made me forget all my troubles and everyone in my father's family. Joseph named his second son Ephraim. For he said, God has made me fruitful in this land of my grief. This Bible study is for us all. We, we all have been hurt by a family. We all have been broken in some way. We all have felt some kind of way for whatever kind of reason when it comes to our family. The point is God can turn that evil to good. Sometimes God hides his plan for good to test our obedience and to conceal it from the enemy. We must maintain our faith until it is revealed to us. And God wants us to continue to love on our family. So let's talk about this story. Have you ever felt like Joseph in your family? And what are some things you can take away from this story of Joseph to improve the dynamic in your own family? All right, let's open it up for discussion. 